We'll venture back now and have a closer look at the surface of a silica particle, which has been converted into a C-iodine stationary phase through reaction of the C-iodine hydrophobe. You'll notice that some of the silanol groups are underrivitized, that is, they don't have any C-iodine hydrophobe bonded to them. This occurs in reverse phase packings because of what we call steric hindrance, which is a fancy way of saying the C-iodine hydrophobe is just too big to get close enough to all the silanol groups to react. For the analysis of acidic and neutral compounds, the presence of these unreacted silanols is not a problem. But basic compounds can interact with these silanol groups because the silanol groups are weak acids. In this animation, the pH is low and we are analyzing a base which will exist in the protonated or ionized state. As can be seen, this can slow down the progress of some of the molecules as they interact more with the silanol groups and these slowed down molecules will elute slightly later from the column resulting in a tailing peak. You'll probably need to play this animation several times and note that the molecules enter the stationary phase at pretty much the same time but exit at different times because of this interaction with the silanol groups. This interaction with the silanols can still occur for a non-ionized base, but there is a common way to minimize this, and that is to neutralize the silanol groups with a smaller hydrophobe, such as a C3 hydrophobe, which is small enough now to get in close to the silanol groups to react. This whole process is known as end capping the column. 